Hi guys, Rob here with Deluxe Gaming, and I have a bit of a problem. I can't seem to stop playing Beyond Soul long enough to make a unique and interesting intro. Launched in Early Access via Steam on June 30th, 2015, Beyond Soul is a top-down space shooter. But wait! Before you say I've seen it before, you have to take a closer look. Beyond Soul is also a procedurally generated open world empire builder that requires managing your empire's economy on a macro level while racing against other factions to conquer the whole universe. Well, okay, at this point of early access, it's only a small chunk of rim space, but I have to say it's an action-packed one. Being developed and self-published by Praxia Entertainment here in my stomping grounds, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, woohoo! By a couple of guys who used to work for BioWare, the developers of Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Even though this is early access, the game is very stable and there is a ton of content already. So without a doubt, I want to start a Beyond Soul series here on the channel and there is no better way to explain the game than to just get started. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention is that this is also a multiplayer game out of the box. Yes, the indie developer, and this is so unusual for an indie game to have multiplayer out of the box. More often than not, the indie game developers are more focused on working on a good single player experience, but in this case, they have included that right away, which is absolutely fantastic. So in essence, how this works is you start a single player game and then other people can join your IP and just come in and out of that of your system whenever they please. It's really quite cool. And, but the, the downside is just like, well, with any of these uh, multiplayer games to uh, to join somebody's IP, they're, they have to be port forwarding and all that kind of stuff. So it takes a little bit of setup. We're not gonna be doing that for this particular playthrough, but I just thought I'd point it out that it's already there. It's one of the most demanded features, I think, for most new games that don't have it. If a game doesn't have multiplayer, it is like the first thing everybody asks for is multiplayer. Well, I mean, it's there. But anyway, and I, I have to tell you, the single player is good enough already, even as early access. It doesn't even need the multiplayer, but with the multiplayer, it's over the top. Like, that's where a game gets its real longevity. So we are going to be doing a single player game. We're going to be, I've already built a profile. Um, yeah, uh, I guess we'll do it again, just so I can show you. How that works okay so we're going to be doing uh the player profile this is going to be deluxe we'll just do deluxe deluxe is good and uh i think we'll go with the blue because blue is kind of my thing i do like blue but I'm actually my favorite color is green so let's do green yeah the dark green yeah and let's this one here i thought kind of looked a little bit little bit like a d and maybe you could fit in a G in there so I thought ah that'd be good for deluxe gaming there we go so create and we're gonna go back and we're gonna create a new solar system so this these are essentially your save games or your individual systems and of course it saves your player now I don't I have like I said I haven't played with the multiplayer but assume but it would save your friends stuff your friends cities and stuff in there too I don't know I don't know I'm really looking forward to eventually trying that out but okay and we're just gonna call this uh, we're gonna call the system scuttle but uh, just cuz just cuz uh, but with two T's, because when you're this good, you get two T's. Nah, I don't know. But just, I like it. Scuttlebutt. There we go. And we're going to create Scuttlebutt and click on Scuttlebutt. And there we go. So now we're good to go. We can start a brand new game. Uh, yeah, it even tells you here. Friends can join your game by connecting to your IP address. This may require you to enable port forwarding on your router. It's, it's a little bit convoluted to set up port forwarding, and it totally depends on what kind of router you have. I'm not going to be doing this in this episode. If you guys are interested in knowing a little bit more of that, uh, more of how to do port forwarding, uh, you know, maybe we can talk about that in a future episode. But for now, we're just going to get this started. Now, this game is all real time. Oh, right. This is, this is probably the only thing I don't like about the game is that this intro, you can't skip it. And I think it's actually creating the universe right now. So, but whatever, I'm just going to read this. In the late 21st century, scientists discovered a groundbreaking cure for aging. As a result, humanity looked to the stars as they confronted the looming threat of overpopulation. Billions of men and women founded new colonies in space. This was a turning point in human history. Colonists initially settled within the solar system, constructing orbital cities around planets and moons with uninhabitable surfaces. Yet the resources of Sol could not sustain its colonies. The extrasolar planets promised new riches, new homes, and new lives. Many chose to adventure to adventure into the deep. Spacefarers struggled with the stresses of confinement and isolation that were typical of prolonged interstellar voyages. After two centuries of conventional travel, they developed jump gates and revolutionized communication with the known galaxy. Uh, these channels of instantaneous travel between habited, habited regions dis <laughs> disparate 
parts of the galaxy, blah, blah, blah. The fringe of unexplored phrase, universally known as the Rim, featured easy access to new resources. However, the powerful factions hostile. Ah, it's too fast. Uh, place of danger, blah, blah, blah. 1,000 years of exploration, 1 million worlds colonized, 1% of the galaxy charted. Uh, what dwells in the Rim? Okay, sorry guys, I, I I was trying to trying to read it, you know, with passion, but you know. Okay, here we are, guys, and I am going to go over the controls really quickly. I don't want to spend too much time because this is a real-time game, and as time progresses, everything happens, and there's no way to pause and stop everything from happening. So there are other civilizations in the galaxy that are doing their own thing, that are building their cities, that are mining their own resources, and of course, we are doing nothing while I go over this. But uh, I, it's, I think it's really important that we cover this really quickly. So unlike most other top-down space shooters, we do not use the WASD keys to move. We actually use the right mouse button to turn your ship. So right click, right click, and it'll turn to the location, the direction that you clicked. You can also hold down the right mouse button to steer continuously. And that's generally how I steer the ship unless I'm doing something specific. Now to activate your thrusters, of course, you can hit the space bar. Space bar will put your thrusters up to max speed, which is 100%. It will slowly progress up to its max speed after you hit it. And then if you hit the space bar again, of course, it slams on the brakes. It'll slow down as quickly as possible. You may also use the mouse wheel. You can rotate the mouse wheel up and you can see the thruster going up here up to 90, 100%. And of course, you can slow it down by bringing down the uh, mouse wheel. So very easy. So uh, thruster on, thruster off, and of course, the mouse wheel. Now, uh, and what's really cool is the AI will make use of uh, slowing down as a tactic in dogfights, so it actually is quite handy to slow down your ship at certain times when you're fighting. Uh, unlike a lot of these types of games do as well, there is, you know, this, slowing down can give you a certain amount of advantage. Now, I'm going to stop the ship while we kind of go over a, a few other things here. If we hit M on the keyboard, that brings up our galactic map. Now, this is the portion of the rim that has been assigned to us or that we landed in. Now, every time you start the game, it's completely different. It's completely different every time. So it is, it's actually really exciting. Even the types or the names of the civilizations that are going to be in with you are completely different. I guess they're factions more of, I mean, we're all human, right? These are all different human factions. So we have the Ethera and under, and, and Ethera has Earth City. So everybody has their main city. And then underneath that city is the number. And that number signifies the power or strength of that civilization based on the types and quality of buildings that are in their city, as well as the how strong their fleet is, I think, too, as well. And of course, every uh, civilization has their own colors. So, and ours is green and his is purple. So he actually has ownership over these, all of these areas, which means he's gathering, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, taxes, I guess, uh, from these different uh, areas. So that's kind of cool. So um, we can zoom out. That's as far as we can zoom out, unfortunately. And I don't think I can actually look around this map. No, that's, that's as far as it goes. So it's not a huge map, but it's a good start for early access. It's pretty darn good. Now, you'll also notice that there are a number of different flashy things on the screen. Of course, there we are. There's the jump gate that we're at. And of course, each one of these flashy things is an event. Now, this would be a debris field. Debris field is like a, a, a battle has gone, has happened here already. And uh, now we can just come and clean up the goodies that are left behind. This is the sun. You do not want to uh, fly into or near the sun because you will break up and get destroyed. Learn that the hard way. <laughs> like most people probably do. Um, this is a battle. A ba now, these battles and these distress signals, thats these are good ways to improve relations with, say, because it's close to Zulu Prime, it's probably somebody from Zulu Prime that's in trouble. It's probably a freighter from Zulu Prime that's in trouble that's being attacked by pirates. Now, if we destroy those pirates, it'll improve our relationship with Zulu Prime. If I hit I on the keyboard, it brings up diplomacy. Diplomacy is very important in this game. We're going to talk more about this as time goes on, but if I destroyed those those pirates that are attacking the freighter, uh, Zulu Prime freighter, of course, Zulu Prime, uh, their relationship with us would improve and eventually you can uh, become friends and stuff. But uh, if you have territories or borders that are close to another or cl uh, right on right next to each other between a different faction and yourself, of course, that is not good for a relationship right off the bat. I think you lose 20 points right off the bat for that. Anyway, so First things first, when you first start a map, and I gotta move fairly quick here, um, you want to find a good place for you to start your own faction. And of course, first thing you wanna do is build a city. So you take a look around and try and find something as far away from everything as possible. And I'm just gonna start heading this direction. So if I right click on the map, that sets a 
position for us to set a course to, and then I can hit J on the keyboard to activate my jump drive and set us going that way. Now I can do that from both the map screen and I can do it from this screen too as well. So it takes a second to charge your ship. Now you do have shields and hull, except when you are in jump space. When you're in jump space, you do not have shields activated. In other words, Pirates can attack you when you're in hyperdrive like this, and because you don't have shields, you will take hull damage directly. So it's important to be careful what you're flying through, so sometimes you will have pirate bases and such uh, that uh, you need to get through, and sometimes it's not always the best thing to go right over top of it. Now, while we're in hyperspace here, we can change our direction at any time, so we can uh, say we decide, oh no, we want to go this direction, we're going to go this direction. But no, we actually want to go sort of this way. What I have in mind here is I'm looking at this area and I'm going, ooh, so these are these planets and these planetoids offer a place for us to mine, and mining is huge in this game. In other words, uh, we can build a city, and it's got, everything costs resources and money, uh, and we can sell resources for money. Resources are really, really, really important, and you can there's a number of ways you can gather them. You can mine them. You can uh, you can mine them manually from asteroid fields. You can mine them from these planetoids. You can harvest them from wrecks of ships. Uh, and you can trade for them, you can buy them with money, etc. But uh, the easiest way to get them is, of course, mining them from planets because it's automatic. So I think if we go down here, we take over. Now, we, you can build a city. You have to build a city. Actually, before that, we do that. We're going to head to this debris field because it's right here. So we're going to hit the jump drive and we're going to go the other direction. And uh, to build a city, we have to build it in an open area. We cannot build it in these asteroid fields, nor can we build it on a planet. So we're going to zoom in here. When we're going to head to this, uh, so it looks like a battle took place here at one point, and uh, all that's left is, are these two ships. So, to harvest the resources from these ships, which is what we want to do, or salvage them, I can hit the S key, which launches a salvage drone, and I have two of those suckers, so I can have them going at all times. Now, it doesn't matter if they are on the screen or not when I leave. So in other words, I could be here and then launch them to go do the thing, and then I could go do something else, right? Um, I don't know if... It's, you, you're penalized if you jump away from them. I'm not sure. I haven't actually tested that. But as you can see, we gained a, a few resources. Oh, wow. Okay, uh, this must be a bug. For some reason, we have a bunch of resources and money. And we shouldn't. We should have nothing. Because <laughs> I started a brand new game. I wonder if it's, it carries over. There's some kind of bug I hear probably that... Uh, uh, carries over something from my last game or something. But anyway, anyway, so this is my hold. We can carry 100 units of whatever. And of course, it, uh, uh, these different minerals that you see here, iridium, osmium, palladi palladium, thorium, titanium, and uranium are the different resources that you can collect in the game. And it looks like have, I have a smattering of all of them. And of course, credits, uh, universal galactic credits, whatever they are, um, 49,478. Normally you don't start with so much. And then of course, the size of my fleet, and we can increase this. We can increase all of these values by upgrading our ship, but we can only do that in a base or in our city. So we're gonna go found a city. So we're gonna jump over here. <laughs> and like I said, the reason I'm choosing this area is because we've got a few planetoids that we can harvest from and we're not very close to anybody so that's kind of a good thing and I wouldn't mind being close enough to get that iridium too but I'm worried that Etheria will get in too close there so I think right here is probably a good place I think half the battle is just making that decision so now to build a city we're gonna hit B on the keyboard and it gives us a few options now establish city is the top one it is completely free to build a city but you must build it in a in the central location in the sector every every sector has kind of that central location and you that's the only place that you can build these types of buildings so of course all we have to do is establish a city you can only build one city as far as i know but i think your friends can build cities with you when you're doing multiplayer and stuff like that so we're going to hit d on the keyboard now that we've built our city and take a look at the city in the center of the city, you can see that we have a control center. The control center gives us a few things in the city without building any other buildings. It gives us some population, so it gives us three population, gives us six power, um, no hangar space, but it does give us a little bit of storage space for some minerals. That's kind of cool. It also, once we're docked, we can actually repair a ship if we have any hull damage, and it's relative to the amount of, uh, it, it costs money, but it's relative to the amount of hull damage that you take. Uh, there, we have access to a commodity market where we can buy and sell these minerals. We can also, this is our ship's hold, and this is the city storage, so we can move minerals from our ship's hold to the city storage, which is great because, of course, we don't want to be carrying around a whole bunch of stuff with us because, of course, if we blow up, we can spend money to bring back our ship, but we do lose whatever was in our hold, although we can go try and retrieve it too as well. I try not to die that often, so I don't know a lot about it. Um, okay, and also we can sell minerals directly from our city's inventory or our ship's inventory by 
clicking on the city thing and then going over here and it tells us what the cost or what what the price is to both sell, sell and buy so we could go over to the city and we can say i want to sell 25 of the thorium just to free up some space in there and boom i sold some thorium and i got some decent money because that's a pretty good price too as well and i'm going to sell a little bit of that uranium too as well yeah there we go there we go so that should free up some space in the city too as well okay so now um to we cannot build a mining or a radar station in the sector, same sector that we built any of these. So in other words, because we have a city here, we can't build either of these. And if we build a mining station in the sector, we can't build a radar station in the center. You can only have one of these types of establishments. Now, um, of, and of course, you can only have one city total. Now, with a city, um, because you have, I have the, op, I have three population, uh, uh, three surplus population. I have three total, but I have three surplus and I have three, six surplus power. With that, we can actually power and f and fuel with people these uh, different buildings. So in other words, I can have a commercial center that will produce an income of 160 credits per minute. So right now we have a current income of 250 credits per minute just because of this control center. We can actually add to that with a commercial center. But the cost is, of course, 5,000 credits, one-time payment, and some population, three population and two power. So that would reduce our population surplus to zero and our power to four. Make sense? Right. And of course we can add turrets and all sorts of stuff, as well as specific technologically advanced corporations can house themselves in our cities so that we can actually do some ship upgrades. So this is where it gets kind of cool. So we can, oh, oh, see, there's a bug here. There's definitely a bug here because we have not actually any done any of this research in this game. I, I, I think there's a problem with the save games. But anyway, so yes, uh, having certain, like having the Tech, Tecla Corporation or the Exeter Corporation opens up different types of weapons, but it looks like they're all opened up here, so you'll just have to excuse the fact that this is still an alpha product, but uh, they are opened up and you can eventually upgrade these. We start off with a plasma bolt and a homing missile. Both have their specific purpose and we'll talk about those later, but then we can, eventually there's gonna be systems. I don't know what those are gonna look like. And of course, different ships that you can buy, but for now you can upgrade your ship and add to the values of your ship. See, that number's incorrect. Yeah, it's, we have a level one ship, but it's saying that we have a level two. So I don't know, it's it's just a, a silly bug, but it doesn't matter. Okay, and we can also manage our fleet. We can buy different ships from these different corporations. We can buy ships from Tecla, buy ships from Exeter, and buy ships from Cryos, although that is not part of this alpha. Now, uh, we have to have, of course, the corporation living in our city in order for that to work. <sighs> I hope you're with me and now we can also upgrade the buildings that we put in this in this uh, in this city by hitting the U button or hitting the upgrade button down the bottom and it tells you what you need to upgrade the buildings. For example, the control center, if we upgrade it, will give us an extra 100 storage, six power, three people and more income, but it would cost us 50 titanium, 40 palladium, 40 osmosis, Oso Osmosium, I think it is, and it costs us 100,000 credits. We don't have any of that. We have to make some money and uh, earn some minerals doing some other stuff first. Okay, let's get to it. <laughs> I think the rest will cover as we go. So now we have all these anomalies in the air. And of course, we've seen the debris field. We're going to go back and we're going to hit another debris field right away because they're the easy ones. It, usually you are not attacked by anybody. So... <laughs> And uh, we're going to try and maybe build a mining station and a radar station so that we can collect tariffs. Tariffs is a word I was looking for, not taxes. Tariffs from any other uh, civilizations or ships that are passing through the system. So kind of cool. Oh, we just discovered a pirate base. Oh, great. So there's a pirate base right beside, oh, right beside our home base. Fan freaking tastic. You can't move your home base, I don't think, at least not in this version of the game. So I just, I stopped and I hit the space bar just to power up the thrusters. You do, when you come out of hyperspace, you're generally out of power. So now you'll notice that we were in an asteroid field. You can actually mine resources from an asteroid field, but they tend to be a little bit more hostile until you take ownership of them. So I can hit S, I can hit S. And as a matter of fact, I can just keep going here. I can even look around a little bit. Um, I don't have to stop and wait for those guys, but uh, I still have one more to harvest. So I can hit S here. Now, once he's off and running, I can actually leave the area because he will come back and find me. So I can actually sort of sneak into this uh, asteroid field and see if there's anything immediately available for me. Probably not. Um, I think we just want to keep moving at this point anyway. And we also want to start working on... I'm going to change my build menu back over to the um, this one here. So we can take ownership over these 
asteroid fields as well. And all it does will, it, so you'll notice these asteroid fields have a few numbers on them. They also say pirate threat. So pirate threat is medium on this asteroid field. That means it's a medium chance we're gonna run into the pirates. It's actually pretty high that we're gonna run into pirates with medium. It also tells us that there is a poor amount of osmonium, uh, os osmium and a poor amount of titanium in this asteroid field and of course they can vary in richness so there you've got uranium rich etc and of course you harvest it in this oh so bad guy all right so let's talk about combat targeting you have to left click the target i hope they change that and i hope they make a you know a nearest target button or something and then of course uh q and w are uh, you can assign your weapons whatever you want but uh these are q and w for me and i actually find that the way that's laid out is pretty good now uh the plasma bolt is really good on shields whereas the missile is really good on hull but the missile of course has to track it's a little bit trickier to use now see how he slowed down there he tried to make sure that he got he wanted to be sure that he got ahead of me that was brilliant actually well done yeah but it didn't yeah it's, it's one little ship like that i'm not too worried about and of course we can salvage from him and let's see if we can find uh an asteroid here to harvest from so that you guys can see how that works i think i already showed you that but uh i don't know <laughs> um yeah it's actually a lot of fun and even you know even even in even in times where you're just kind of running around gathering materials and stuff it, it's actually really fun but once you start building up your fleets and stuff man is it cool so there's a pirate base here but uh we do want to take control of this planetoid by building a mining station and we also want to take control of this planet by adding a mining station now we should have enough resources between our city osmium there so there's so to build a mining station we're going to need 10 osmium and 10 high titanium and we should have enough so we've got uh five osmium three titanium and on us like actually on us we have some osmium titanium so we should have enough to build our first mining platform so we're going to actually go to this planetoid because we get osmium osmium and titanium there and we're gonna jump perfect don't worry i'm gonna talk less as this goes on well i'm not probably not gonna talk less but i'm gonna be doing more stuff as uh as we move on here and i'm trying to be explaining less because like i said all these guys are doing their thing and they are trying to get ahead right now you can see that the power of our civilization civilization is three that is very very low compared to some of these guys uh some yeah there's a guy over 100 here <laughs> It's going to take us a while to get that big, and that's why we're so far away from him. Okay, so to build a mining station, we have to go to the green area, and we'll stop our ship, and all we can do is click on mining station, so we have everything. It's going to cost us 6,000 credits, 10 titanium, 10 osmium, 2 population. So yes, it, you still use population putting down mining stations and raider stations, and we're going to still get a, some tariffs from this, um, but uh, for the most part, it's going to give us more minerals. So there we go. We, have, we are actually getting four osmium per minute and four titanium per minute directly deposited into our city very cool eh and on top of that we now own this sector this sector becomes ours and it becomes um a little more difficult for uh well pirates i don't think pirates just show up as often they do and they will attack your bases uh mining or not now let's see here do we have now we don't have enough to do much else so we're just going to go back to the base and drop off our resources <laughs> Oh, so fun. It, honestly, this, this, I, I played probably a good 12 hours already. Um, and uh, I gotta tell you, it got really fun. It was really tough at first, though. It's, it's tough when you don't know what you're doing in this game. And uh, there wasn't a lot of instruction. <laughs> so we're just gonna D for dog. Perfect. And we're gonna drop off any minerals we have, sell any excess. And of course, we took some hull damage somewhere. I'm not sure where. So we hit repair and boom, that repairs that up. Perfect. If we die, uh, we have to replace our ship. And of course, uh, the higher the level of the ship, the more expensive it's gonna be, etc. So let's uh, sell off um, uh, any anything that's that we have a lot of. So we'll sell off this thorium because we already have 22. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I sold off. Oh, I sold. Yeah, you got to be careful because right now I'm on the the city storage and I meant to be on the uh, the ship storage. I'm gonna sell off this uranium too. Uh, we still have ten in the in the station and we're gonna sell. Uh, we don't, we're, we're gonna keep that osmium. We're gonna be using a lot of osmium, palladium, and titanium for the next little bit as we build our stations. So we're going to undock and go find some trouble. Trouble! Um, this is a pirate bounty. We're not going anywhere near the pirate bounty, but we'll try the battle. Um, the battle usually consists of a another faction's ships versus some pirates. And if you win, you get some diplomatic points in favor of... Uh, 
or relative to the the faction that you helped so uh, for some reason, I was trying to go back. I can close the screen. I don't need that open. So pretty exciting. Uh, oh, there's a lot here. Oh wow, there's way more than I expected. Okay, uh, we'll we'll try it. Okay, so uh, we're still in kind of a newbie ship for us to be facing this many guys. Uh, wow, wow, he looks. That's a big ship. Holy bro. So we're gonna take out, try and take out some of these big guys, maybe, and hopefully these guys don't uh, get locked on me. Cause notice these big guys, they don't they don't dodge as well. It, it, there's actual, there is an advantage to having a small ship. Wow. So we're gonna get the resources from that and kind of dip away here. Do a little circle around. <laughs> Try and take out some of these smaller guys. There's enough of them that, yeah, but there's enough friendlies here too. So there we go. Yes. <laughs> um, it's really cool when you start getting other weapons too. So yeah, those little guys that go down pretty quick. But you gotta hit them with the missiles, man. And you gotta, you know, try to use your missiles after they've lost their shields. That's really important too. Uh, oh, there's a big guy. We'll take care of the big guy. They do a lot of damage. Now, you can use your missiles before they, like, while they still have shields up. They just, the missiles just don't do as much damage, right? Missiles do tons of damage to hull. See that? There you go. That's the deal. Awesome. And you'll notice as I'm going here, I am, I am salvaging. It's just a little bit more efficient, especially if I need to bail from the area. Uh, that way I've always, I've got the resources, right? We may actually win this, guys. There we go. It's the one thing I'm, I'm really hoping that they add. I hope they add like a nearest target function because right now it is, it can be a huge pain trying to target these guys. Um, Especially the fast-moving ones, but maybe that's maybe that's part of the the, the game and the challenge, right? I guess. <laughs> uh, now, if one of the friendlies here die, we can salvage for him too as well. See, there, tricky, tricky, target, target. I am clicking. It's not working. That is a friendly. Friendly. He's from a Zulu. He's a Zulu font, a Zulu Prime ship. So it looks like they killed him. Perfect. So we got. We should have gotten a little bit of diplomatic credit. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so Zulu Prime, we actually have, uh, we're up to 10. Uh, we got 10 points and we came to their aid. So we got plus 10. Now that de degrades at 0.1 per minute. Oh, that looks like a friendly ship that maybe got destroyed. Cool, we can still salvage that too. So now, like I said, if uh, if on the map we are, our civilization was bordered with them, we would automatically lose a whole bunch of points there. But since we're not, it's all good. So we can actually start to work on building some friends here too, right? So that's kind of cool. And we're going to go get a little bit more salvage. We still have lots of room. Don't want to leave before we uh, are full up. And we are trying to get... Let's just go check here again. We're trying to get enough for another mining station. And it looks like we've got enough. We've got enough for the mining station, not enough for a radar station. So radar station you use to capture either an asteroid field or just an empty space. And the mining station is used for the planetoid and the planets. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah. All right, so let's get this stuff. I'm, I'm super stoked. I hope you guys really like this because I'm hoping to play a lot of it in the next couple weeks. Um, it's been, I, I, I've been, you know, I, I crave stuff like this. It reminds me of, of lots of little things, you know, a little bit of spaz, a little bit of start control, a little bit of, whoops, I targeted them both there. That's fine. Um, a little bit of uh, old Starfleet battles, like the original, I think Starfleet battles one or two, they had this, uh, this conquest map that was super, super, super fun to play. And this is, of course, very similar to that, but uh, a lot more advanced in how it all works. So let's go. I, we're out of time here, but uh, <laughs> we're gonna go get another one here and maybe go back and build that second mining station, which would be super handy. And we've gotta watch your storage now because we are automatically mining into our base. We're up to 79. And if it maxes out, it will stop mining. So that, that sucks. We wanna make sure that our income is maintained, right? So. Always crossing these asteroid fields, <laughs> you always get attacked, right? And it depends. Whoops. Whoa. How can we stop there? That was weird. Okay, we'll get that. That's an asteroid. Um, oh, maybe this was where we were going? No? This is where we were going. Okay, so there should be some... I'll get that too. Oh, he's out of range. That's fine. Uh, there should be some ships around here, but... Uh... Ah, we can take him. <laughs> Slowing down. Speeding up. Yeah, dogfighting, you know, I, I imagine dogfighting will be far more interesting once you get faster ships and stuff. Um, but, uh, because they do, they do slow down and stuff. Uh, oh, there's three of them here now? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, get him. We're already out of shield. 
I'm actually gonna set, so I can set my final destination here, my coordinates. So we're gonna go this way. And we're gonna get out of here. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of that. <gasps> oh, jeez! 65 hull. Yeah, that, that, it can get out of control really fast. Especially, we're right beside a pirate base, too. <laughs> Maybe not a good idea to hang out there. Okay, so, but uh, we ha should have enough minerals here to place a modding station at the other little planetoid here. That's fantastic. This is actually a great start for us. Um, and, uh, oh, what? Oh, we're not, uh, oh, we're not, we're not adjacent to one of our, one of our sectors. We actually have to build um, a radar station in the other one here first. Let's just see. Do we have enough to build our radar station yet? We do, actually. So let's do that, and then we'll go back to base, and then we'll call it an episode. And like I said, we're going to be doing a lot of these over the next few days, um, just because we're going to be doing our other stuff, too. We've got uh, reassembly tournaments and that coming up. Uh, tomorrow, I think, uh, Sunday, we're going to be doing some, too, as well. Uh, reassembly tournaments. But don't worry. All the regular stuff is still happening, but I will be playing a lot more of this during the week. I am sure of it. So we're going to be building a radar station here, and just like the mining station and the city, they have to be placed central in this sector. Now the radar station, it doesn't have any defenses, nor does the mining station, but it tells us when something bad is about to happen. And of course, they can be upgraded too. Now we can tell, so the radar station will give us an extra 225, so we're already up to 493 credits per, per minute, which is awesome. Um, it also uh, it uses up some population, so we're now actually at minus one in population, which is which means that we are we, we get a penalty. We're not going to be getting as many tariffs as we want. Uh, do we have enough to put that mining station? We do. Well, let's go do that right away. Uh, hopefully, we're not uh, uh, we're not going to run into trouble here. But we'll tr we'll go put the mining station down before we go. Whoops, Jay. There we go. Um, and then then we've got a nice we've got a nice set of income and we've got some minerals coming in. And then we can get back to the station and. Of course, now we're going to be uh, population minus three after we put this mining station down, which means we're not going to be mining as fast and we're not going to be gaining tariffs as quickly uh, just because we don't have enough population to do everything. We can't do it all. We need, to, we need to put some housing down in the city in order to make it all work perfectly, but at least this way we've got some basics up and now we can start to focus on the city itself. So let's jump. <laughs> ah, so much fun. So yeah, we've already taken over. Whoops. I hit the J button. Didn't mean to do that. Whoopsie. All right. So yeah, we've already taken over four sectors. Now, if when you take over, uh, use put a radar down in a asteroid field. Now you can't place it where there's a pirate base. We have to destroy the pirate base in order to do that. But if you place it down in an asteroid field, it will reduce the pirate threat by one level. So in other words, pirate threat is medium. Now if we put down a radar, it'll bring it down to low. Now keep in mind the pirates can still attack, and they can destroy your your bases. They can destroy your city. Uh, so you do have to build defenses for them and, of course, prepare fleets and all that kind of good stuff. So we're going to go in here, we're going to dock, and we're going to repair. And then we're going to start working on our population stuff on the next episode. So I hope you enjoyed episode one of Beyond Soul because this game is awesome. Okay, all right. Take care, guys. We'll see you soon.